Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgi Chakarov and together we look at pivot tables and graphs in the pivot table and data visualizer apps within DHIS2 or how to report on your data. Okay, I'm here again with Georgi. Hey Georgi. Hi Nick. Hey, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Yourself? Pretty good, thanks. And uh, today let's look at how we build our pivot tables and graphs once we have all of our data in the system. So this should be uh, fairly simple and more looking at how we create uh, and customize these pivot tables and graphs. So let's uh, just jump right over into our development space and we can start playing around looking at what we're doing. So where, what do we have here, Georgie? Okay, so you have... Um... The first steps that you need to take is actually select what you would like to report on. So this could be a, an indicator, like a group of indicators, data elements, uh, events, program indicators. So, yeah, so in this case, oh, yeah, please go on. Oh, so yeah, this time we'll, we'll be selecting our data elements that we've created for the USDA. Um, and what we are now is we are what we are where you would f arrive once you click the data. Um, sorry, the pivot table app or the uh, data visualizer app. It would look at like the same uh, layout here. So uh, Georgie's just going to select some of the USDA indicators that we've put in by selecting data elements and then selecting data element group. And we've created a USDA indicator group or data element group. So that makes it easier for us to select these. Uh, and then you can either double click or select and um, yeah, that's the, the double arrows means everything on the left goes to the right, and anything on the right column there will be used as our data elements or indicators. So next we need to choose our period, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And there's two ways to select periods. So do you want to talk about the set uh, periods that we can select? Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, first you can select the period disaggregation, so to speak. So you can select daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and so on. Mm -hmm. And also the other option is, actually, let me just give you an example. If you select monthly, then you can either select all months mm -hmm. here by clicking the double arrow, or you can actually select just a few ones that you, that you like, mm -hmm. like this, right? Uh, the other option is to use like uh, these tick off boxes where you can actually select um, your period. So if you click last three months, for example, then your report will always show you the last three months. So if uh, one month has passed, um, it will show you from this date uh, backwards the last three months. And it, respectively, it is the same for uh, weekly data and yearly data. Mm -hmm. And can you just show how you select a previous year uh, for our set months? Because I see 20, December, November, October 2016, but what if I wanted to show 2015? I would click that previous year button, right? On the right side? Yes, yeah, exactly. There you go, and then that's how you, that's how you move around. Uh, cool, yeah, so that's, that's great. Yeah, the, 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 the relative months, or the last six months, the last weeks, the last months, that's a great way to see what's going on uh, currently. Whereas if you make a report, you might want to set specific months. So for this video, let's just look at the last six months. So we'll just tick off last six months, and then we'll untick the last five years, which is our default start. And that should be good enough for periods for now, but it's up to you to choose. And then next, we'll have to select our organization units. So there's a couple of ways to do this again. So right now we have logical outcomes selected, so it'd be everything uh, under, that's the top level org unit. But if we want, we can open up Canada, for example, and we can select one or more of these org units just by clicking on them and either shift clicking or uh, control clicking, yeah, to, to choose multiple uh, of these organization units. But let's unselect these actually for the moment. So if you just click the one that's selected, it'll unselect it. And we'll go over to the cog and select org units from a group. So we have a group already created, which is the Toronto Schools. And we can just select that one. And that speeds up the process of selecting a number of org units 
Uh, you can also choose to select at level. If you want to use all of your facilities, you can do that as well. So let's go forward now. Um, and just, uh, we're now ready to, I should say, we're now ready to create a pivot table. But before we do, I just wanted to point out that there's a lot of other options below organization units, and you might see different ones in your system. What these are, is, are these are categories that we have checked off the box to say, uh, display in reports. So the color one is an example that Sarah and I created together for one of these videos. And you can see that these are the options that we provided, the category options. And so you can see this in reports and you can then report by this disaggregation. But these data elements that we're looking at for this example today don't have any categories associated with them. So it's not going to apply, but just to kind of point out where those live. So let's click update now and it should show us a report based on the last six months. Great. So in a column we have, this is our default report, we have columns that are uh, our data elements and we have our periods on the far left. Now we also have totals at the bottom and on the side, but we can choose to take those off. So let's take those off, Georgie, because they don't really make sense. Uh, we don't want to add things together. So we can take off the um, yeah the row subtotals, and we can actually just take them all off to clean it up a little bit. Nice. So we we now have taken off that, and we just have totals over the last t six months. Now let's say we want to change the order of things. Yeah. So we'll go to layout and you can see here we have row dimension, column dimension, and then the filter. So at the moment the filter is the org unit. So we have all the org units together and then we have the columns as the data element and the, the rows as the periods. Now let's switch this up a little bit. So what if we wanted our rows to be the org units? and then we want the periods to be our filter. So everything is going to be over, it's going to be a collection over the last six months of, of data that we see, but it'll be broken up by org unit. Here we go. And now we have a lot of blanks, so we can go to options again, and I believe we can actually choose to ignore, yeah, hide empty rows. Let's update that, that should make it a bit easier. There we go. And you can see now we have it all broken up by school, and it's just the collection of data over the last six months. So there's a lot of ways to move this stuff around. In options, I think we can also rename some of our titles or add titles. Um, and this is how you customize your pivot table or um, your report to be what you'd like. You change the font size and all that stuff. Now let's go to legend set here because we have created a legend set. Um, at the bottom there before parameters uh, in the options it says legend set this is where we can create like a heat map so um, what that shows is if you select we might be able to um, try clicking that one it's not going to apply necessarily to our report but uh, let's hit update and see if it actually yeah so there you go so you can see what that does is it actually changes the the numbers color so you get a kind of highlighted heat map now that one legend set was specifically designed for percentages so it hasn't dealt with all of our numbers but it does change the colors and you can create those legend sets in the mapping app yeah Georgie yeah cool so and we'll talk about that more in the when we when we cover that reporting um, so Georgie, do you want to add anything else into the pivot tables before we jump over to charts? Mm, let me quickly think. I think that's that's pretty much uh, pretty much all about the charts. Okay. Yeah. So let's go into charts. So we can open the same yeah and open this table as a chart. So you can swap right over, which is really nice. We'll do that because. It's the same uh, layout, so we don't have to cover how you select your data elements and periods and org units because it's the same thing. But we will look at we knew we now have type at the at the top left there uh, for the type of chart. So we have um, vertical columns or horizontal columns or line graphs or pie charts. So 
if you just select yeah if you just select that one and then click update georgie it'll just show how you can just yeah reverse it there and let's select a line chart and then we'll go back to layout because right now um we're not showing yeah our org, our org units are the category dimensions so let's go back to period and see what this looks like there we go so you see this big shift over time and let's go back to um, a line graph or a, a bar chart sorry and we have over time so I'm interested now because this is an example of, of how you can kind of play with your graphs as you're creating reports to find the one that works best so I'd like to see a percentage of all of the org units that we're looking at, all the schools, and see which ones are actually getting the most stuff. So let's go to a pie chart. And this is, of course, by time. So we'll have to change the layout to org units. So the category dimension will be org unit. Yeah. And now we have to just change the org units, because right now it's, it's uh, kind of forgotten our group set. Or, or organization group. So let's go back to and select groups and get these schools in here. And now we should see, there we go. So we see this interesting where we can clearly see which schools are getting what. Yeah? Yeah. Cool, so I think, th and the options are the same thing. Let's just click it while we're here uh, to show what options are. Uh, similar things you can hide empty stuff you can show trend lines if you're doing a line graph it'll create a trend line for you which is kind of nice um, so there's all this sort of stuff that you can uh, add title hide title that sort of thing so before we finish uh, let's save our chart so that we can actually uh, look at it again or add it to a dashboard so to do that we have to go to favorites and we have to add a new favorite and then it'll ask us our names. This can be called uh, Logical Outcomes. And we'll just call it uh, Chart because it's just a test. And we'll press Create. Perfect. And now that we've created it, it'll be available to pull up into a dashboard. So there we go. Looks like we already have one that we might have uh, saved, um, but that's fine. So from from there we can download them as well. Well, because we're not going to show the dashboard this time. Okay. Um, but we can download these as images or PDFs or XMLs, uh, especially if it's a pivot table, and we can also share it, where you can write an interpretation, and that's where you're going to with the interpretation that's going to appear on someone else's dashboard, which is a question you can make about um, a saved chart or pivot table. So do you have anything else to add for this, Georgie? Otherwise, I think that's good. That's a, a good walkthrough of how we create these. Yes, Anikta, I think that was a very good walkthrough. And I think that this should be enough for uh, users to uh, uh, fulfill that assignment that we have for them. Okay. Yeah. Cool, great. So thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you, Georgie, for sh helping me show this off. And uh, I think we'll call that a day. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes.